Hi, I'm Graham Blackburn and this is Traditional Woodworking by Hand and in our continuing series of episodes based on this book that I wrote about all the tools that you need to practice non-electric woodworking, we're going to be talking about the dado plane. Now before we start on today's episode, I want to remind you that if you like these things and you want, don't want to miss anything, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the like button and feel free to send me questions. You can go to my website, you can do whatever. Anyway, today's episode is about making grooves. There are basically, in most woodworking, three kinds of grooves. The first and simplest kind is a groove that's made around the edge of a piece of wood. And that's done with something called a rabbit plane, which is distinguished by having a flat bottom and a skewed blade. This plane works on the edge of a piece of wood, with the grain or against the grain. The next kind of grain groove you might want to make is a groove that is not at the edge but somewhere in the middle of the wood and for that we use a plow plane which has a fence and a depth stop and adjustable arms and it's designed so that you can make a groove with the grain in any position from the edge the third type of groove the one that we're going to be talking about today, is a groove that you make across the grain. And that's called a dado. And the plane that you use to make dados is called a dado plane. Now, just one little aside. This is a pretty simple piece of wood if you're trying to figure out the grain direction. You can see the grain is lengthwise. So this is with the grain, this is across the grain. But not only is wood not always that regular, you may need to do other things. You may need to do, for example, to cut a groove across a piece of wood, but it's not exactly across the grain. It's not exactly with the grain. So what's the rule? Take a mitre gauge. And imagine that you've drawn a 45 degree angle, right? If the groove that you want to make is less than this angle, then you'd use the plow plane. If the groove is greater than this angle, then you'd use the dado plane. I mention that just because not all wood is so clearly, obviously with the grain, or against the grain. Anyway, today we're going to be using and talking about the different kinds of dado planes which are designed to cut across the grain, either directly across the grain or at an angle that is slightly less than 45 degrees across the grain. Now, here is a piece of sash bar. This would be the piece of a window where this is the inside and on the outside you see two grooves where the glass fits. So in this piece of wood I want to make a groove that this will fit into. Now you'll notice that these dado planes and I have here a selection of them, they're all slightly different. But one thing they have in common, none of them have any kind of width guide. Ideally, you use a dado plane whose sole is the width of the dado that you want to cut. If you look at these, you can see that they're all, each one is slightly bigger. This one is slightly bigger, that one is slightly bigger. 
they typically are the width of the most common size pieces of wood that you might want to use. But they all have other differences too. Mostly they have skewed irons, just like a rabbit plane. And just like a rabbit plane, they have this nice little circle here that when you use them, the shavings come out the side of the plane. Why? Because in use, you need some kind of guide to do this, and you can't have a shaving coming out against the guide. The next thing that you might want to notice is that every dado plane has two blades. It has the cutting blade, but in order that you cut a nice clean sided dado, it has what's called a nicker iron in front of the main blade, and the nicker iron has two points that are exactly the same width as the cutting blade. And I'll show you how we use that in a second. The next thing is that most dado planes have depth stops. Sometimes, like this one, there's no depth stop at all. The next development was simply a piece of wood which could be secured by a pin or a nail or a screw, and this limits the depth of the dado that you're making. A little more sophisticated is to have an integral depth stop which you adjust by turning this screw. Now, there's a lot more details about the uh, dado planes that you'll find if you buy the book. But one really obscure little detail is that if you want to make the depth stop come down, you would think that you turn the adjusting screw clockwise, but in fact, it works the opposite way. I never figured out why, but just be aware of that. The next thing is that most dado planes have these nicker irons that have to be in perfect alignment with the cutting edge because these are the little, little blades that guarantee that you get a nice clean sided blade. This one is a little unusual because it's very old, and I'll tell you a little more about it in a minute. But this one, which was made in the 18th century, differs because the wedges are reversed. This is the wedge for the nicker iron, but it's facing backwards. It also has a depth stop, which you just tap down here, and it's held in place by friction. But essentially, it's like all the other dado planes. It has a flat sole, it has a cutting iron, and it has two pins. So let's use one of these, and let's say that we're going to make a dado in this piece of wood. And remember I said that on this piece of wood, the grain is very clearly going in this direction, but say I want to make a dado that's at a lesser angle than that. What I would do is to secure a fence at the angle that I want the dado to be. And I'll do it using the bench hook. And I'll do it like this. And I'll tighten this down really firmly. So that now this is good. And I'm going to use this dado plane because I want to make a dado for this piece of sash bar. And if you look carefully, you can see that the dado matches the thickness of the piece of wood that I want to fit into the groove. So the first and most important thing that you need to do is to take advantage of these nicker blades. <coughs> Excuse me. So you put the plane on the wood against the depth stop, holding it as upright as you can. And before you make any forward motion, you come back, making sure that you're close to the fence. Now you can see that I've already scored the, what's going to be the sides of the dado. I might do that a couple of times just to be safe. Now, having done that, now I can go forward.
you'll notice that the shavings came out curled on the far side of the plane just like they do on a regular rabbit plane and if I were to continue until the depth stop hit the wood then I would have made the dado at the right width so let's take a look at what we've done we loosen the guide clean up the edge we can talk about how to do that later and we'll see if this fits so we put this in here like this remembering the basic rule that a good well-fitting joint is one that's fairly easy to put together whoops but that doesn't come apart now you can see if you look closely we're not quite deep enough yet so i'm going to put this back and tighten it one more time i put this in here and i'll put the fence up against it and i'll tighten it down really tight and coming back i'll continue to plane a little more and as long as i'm taking shavings i know that i'm not down to the required depth yet Now, I think we're pretty much there. So we'll loosen the guide, put this over here, and we'll test how well this little piece fits into the groove. And bingo, I think it fits in pretty nicely. You can see it goes almost down to the bottom. There's a little bit more there. It's in there, it didn't take force to do it, and ideally, it won't fall out. So this is the plane, the dado plane, that makes a groove across the grain. I was going to tell you one more thing about this. You might think that these planes are pretty obscure. This plane, if you look at the front of it, if you come really close and you read the name, you can see that it says Maddox. Maddox was a plane maker who worked in London in 1746. That in itself is quite remarkable. But even more remarkable is that I found this plane at a yard sale in California. We didn't live in California in 1746, let alone make any molding planes. So it just goes to show that you can find the most amazing things. Here's a, a plane made in London in 1746, and I found it in California. So if you know what you're looking for, you'll be surprised how many of these there still are. There must have been hundreds of thousands of them made in the first couple of hundred years. If you have hundreds of feet of dados to make, then obviously it makes sense to use some kind of machinery like a router. But if you're just making one of a kind pieces, it's much easier to reach for a tool that will do the job without having to spend a long time doing setup, without having to wear earplugs and everything else. And it's also much more pleasurable. So remember that if you want to see more of these, hit the subscribe button and beneath the video, you'll see a picture of the book that you can be directed to find on my website, or you can just call me directly. So next time, we're going to be talking about, I think, what's well, going to be the last of the planes, uh, which will be badgers and plows and other planes like that. So thank you for watching. hope you enjoyed that. Now you know about Dado planes. Keep watching, good luck.